Hello. Today we're going to focus on equilibrium, specifically deadweight loss. In this case, we're looking at the event of attacks on a traditional equilibrium. So our first thing that we're always going to do is graph out with equilibrium problems. We're going to start by placing price on our y-axis and quantity on our x-axis. This should look familiar to you know stuff you've done maybe in Econ 1 or a traditional introductory microeconomics course. So we're going to start by graphing out our demand function, right? That's what we're given. So our demand function is given to us as Q. We can place that D with a Q equals 100 minus P. Now, in order to graph something, we need it in slope intercept form, right? So remember our traditional Y equals MX plus B from um, maybe you know uh, an introductory math course. So the same is true for our price and quantity here, right? Our price would be our y variable and our quantity would be our x. But here we have these flipped. So in order to actually graph this function, what I need to do is transition this over to a y equals mx plus b um, type organization. So we're going to add p to both sides and subtract q from both sides. And now we get our slope as negative 1 for q, or x variable. b is 100 here. And then y is p. From there, I can graph out this demand function. So I'm going to start at a level of 100. I'm going to go down by 1 by 1 by 1 until I hit 100 on the x-axis. So both here will be 100. And there's an accurate representation of our demand function. Our supply function is given to us just as Q equals P. So if I um, rewrite that, right, we can change around that S of P to just be Q and then equals P. And Q equals P is just Y equals X, right? So it's our traditional upward sloping line. It's just a slope of one up and up and up, right? So here's our supply function in red. Okay. so. Where they meet in the middle, that's going to be our equilibrium point right here. That's also good numbers to get, right? So we need to get our equilibrium price and quantity. We need to know where we're starting out before this tax. So what we're going to do is set Q equals 100 minus P equal to Q equals P. And that way we're going to get our equilibrium price and quantity. So we're going to say 100 minus P equals p, right? Because this is the point where our demand function equals our supply function. They're the same, right? Only at this point. So we're going to say 100 equals 2p. So our equilibrium price is p equals 50. Okay. And at that price, we have a quantity of 50 as well. We can plug into either our demand or our supply function. We're going to get a quantity of 50 as well. So that's our starting out point. Now we're saying we're implementing a $10 tax in this market. So from now on, we're going to be in the tax realm instead. Um, given the tax realm, I'm going to do that in purple. What we're going to say is these price variables are now different, right? The price that demanders pay and the price that resellers receive are going to be different numbers, right? So price that demanders pay is now going to be equal to the price that sellers receive, but also plus a tax of $10, right? So we're paying 10 additional dollars as a demander than the suppliers are receiving. So we can say PD is equal to PS plus 10. That also means that we should rewrite our demand and supply functions our demand function is now Q is equal to 100 minus PD, not just P. And Q for supply, so this is demand, our quantity supplied is going to be Q equals price that suppliers receive. OK. If we equate these together, we're going to get 100 minus PD equals PS now. OK, 
okay? And I can use this equation, PD equals PS plus 10, to plug in here for my price that demanders pay. And I can say 100 minus PS plus 10 equals the price that sellers receive. So 100 minus PS minus 10 equals PS or 90 equals 2 PS. So the price that sellers receive is going to be 45. Okay, We can denote that on the graph as being a shift of the supply curve to the left. I can move the supply curve to the left. And that's going to give us a new place that we're hitting our demand and supply functions. So the supply function down here, the price that sellers receive is going to be 45. This gap between the price that sellers receive and the price that demanders pay should be the difference of the tax. So the price that demanders pay then would be 55 or $10 more because of the tax, right? Okay. And then the quantity under this tax will be the same for both suppliers and demanders. It's just the price that's different. So let's plug in, for instance, if price that sellers receive is 45, let's take that and plug it back into our supply function. And we're going to say the quantity under this is going to be 45 also. So we can say quantity under this tax is also 45. Okay. The last step is this question is asking for a deadweight loss. So we're going to find this shaded area in black here, this triangle. And the area of that triangle is going to be the difference of the tax. That's our height. And then times our base, which is going to be this 45 and 50 difference. So a difference of five. And then of course, times one half, because we're looking at a triangle. So we're going to say 10 times 5 times 1 half, or in other words, a deadweight loss of 25, right? And so conceptually, what we're talking about with this deadweight loss is we're saying that due to the tax, we're $10 higher, right? Demanders have to pay $10 more than they used to for the same good, and therefore, they're going to buy less of it, right? And with less product purchased, we're going to lose out on surplus due to the fact that we're purchasing less goods. So there's less goods to have surplus for both producers and consumers. And then also consumers have to pay more than they used to. So they're getting a lower surplus than before. And producers are receiving less than they used to. So they're going to have a lower surplus than before as well. Okay, so that deadweight loss is going to be 25, that triangle right there.